Hello, good morning. My name is Philip Diaz and I'm a member of the FRAC Sustainability Reporting Technical Expert Group. I will present to you today ESSE4 in these educational sessions on the first set of draft ESS. This is just a short summary of the longer video. Um, where if you want more information, please refer to the longer video that is also available on this site. So I present to you here only an overview of the objectives uh, of this draft standard that was submitted to the European Commission, um, insights into more detailed insights into the disclosure requirements you will find in the longer video. So yeah, let's start with uh, this high level overview of the ESRS, uh, in particular the objectives. Um, here you can see that the disclosure requirements were designed to generate data with the objective in mind to help users of sustainability information reporting um, to understand how the undertaking affects biodiversity and ecosystems in terms of positive, negative material, both actual and as well potential impacts. Um, the actions taken and the results of such actions to prevent, mitigate or remediate actual potential adverse impacts and also to protect and restore biodiversity ecosystems. Another objective is uh, of the standard is to understand the plans and capacity of the undertaking to adapt its business model and operations in line with international frameworks and strategies, here focus being the Kunming Montreal Agreement, for example, that was reached by the Convention on Biological Diversity in December 2022, as well as the nature and type and extent of the undertaking's material risk and opportunities related to the undertaking's impacts and dependencies on biodiversity and ecosystems and how it manages them. Um, this builds the basis for the last objective, which is the financial to understand the financial effects on the undertaking, which is outside in materiality over the short medium and long term time horizons of material risks and opportunities that are fed by understanding of the or fulfilling the objectives of the that were previously mentioned. On this slide you can see all the disclosure requirements included in ESRS E4. They cover disclosure requirements that fall into the categories of one general disclosures, two impacts which also in this case includes dependencies, risks and opportunities management. Dependencies aren't mentioned in the titles to ensure that the titles are aligned across the standards, but this is specific to ESF SC4 that dependencies are also considered here. And third category being metrics and targets. The structure is therefore aligned with TCFD and particularly relevant for ESF SC4. The structure of the draft framework is also aligned to the task force for nature related or to the structure of the framework from the task force for nature related financial disclosures tnft you can also see with in this case whatever frameworks regulation the disclosure requirements overlap which are in this case mostly csrd the corporate sustainability directive as well as the sustainable financial disclosure regulation sfdr um, others um, it also matches, however, they are not mentioned because they are still at the draft stage, which namely are TNFD, the Task Force for Nature Related Financial Disclosures, their framework, as well as the draft biodiversity standard of the Global Reporting Initiative. And it is important to note that the requirements of this and other topical standards should be read in context of ESS 1 general requirements and ESS 2 general disclosures, both cross cutting standards. That means that the topical standards do not have work uh, or cannot be reported against as standalone standards. Under general disclosures, there's a transition plan on biodiversity and ecosystems, as well as additional data, DRs and data points related to the strategy and business model of the firm and to understand the impact of and opportunities stemming from both from ESRS2. Subsequently, under impacts in brackets again, dependencies, risk and opportunity management. The undertaking is asked to disclose against its policies as well as actions and resources related to biodiversity and ecosystems put in place by the undertaking to fulfill the policies that it reported on with life. All of those shall be reported in relation to material impacts 
dependency and opportunities identified by the undertaking under user S2 IRO1. Lastly, metrics and targets include the disclosure requirements on the same, plus one disclosure requirement on potential financial effects related to transparency provided against the aforementioned disclosures. This concludes the uh, short summary um, into the glimpse um, into the EFRAC first set of draft ESS with focus on draft ESS E4, and I hope you found it useful. Be sure to also view the other videos provided in the series for your colleagues or other interested stakeholders who want a short introduction to the standard. Please refer them to our suite of videos called Glimpses into EFRAC first set of draft ESS, which is available for each standard on the website from EFRAC. Thank you very much.